paper, as you had published this paper at Cornell University uh, Press uh, on on their website, um, which was solving one of the biggest problems in mathematics for thousands of years never been solved, which is a prime number pattern. And we're all taught in school, in grade school, you know, junior high, that there's no prime number pattern. And what I what I found was that there indeed is, and there's is it, a new type of prime number that's non-prime, but acts like a prime number because it's on the same spoke as a prime number on a 24-hour clock arrangement. Now, just to be clear, for, for again, mm-hmm. for the non-mathematicians, which I assume constitute most of our audience, I don't know how many mathematicians we have listening right now, but uh, the prime number pattern that you're talking about yeah. is a big deal. And for thousands of years, yeah. this has been an, an understanding that we do not have a pattern. Yeah, and that's why all encryptions are based on they're not all your email encryptions password encryptions bank encryptions everything. nuclear codes everything which by the way when I discovered this I did not know that because I didn't really know anything about encryption yeah um, I was doing it because I was working with uh, Nassim Haramain and the Taurus Tech team and uh, they had said hey look at some of these patterns and we're trying to figure out how gravity works and electromagnetism and maybe there's this sort of like unified physics we can come up that's with. that's what jc and i do when we get together <laughs> right so i started working on patterns um and and felt that 24 was kind of an important number not only because we have 24 hours in a day but fibonacci numbers when viewed in digital root analysis which should be a digital root of a number is simply to take the number and add it within itself so the number 27 would have a digital root of nine because two and seven together equals nine. That's a digital nine. root. That's a digital that's okay. root. That's okay. That's a good term for me to know. That's a I digital that. root. Now, I, number theorists use digital root from time to time to identify patterns. So every number, no matter how big the number is, could be uh, distilled down to one of nine numbers, right? One through nine. So, you know, for example, 41 would have a digital root of five. Four plus one equals five. Now, if you look at all geometry... Right, all geometry. What, what if you go bigger than nine with the digital root, like like uh, eighty-seven? Would okay, be so eight plus seven is fifteen. Do you one reduce plus that five down to equals six? six. So you do. Re- it's you so do you reduce, reduce it, it all the way down. You reduce it all the oh, way down. Oh man, I'm going to do this on the plane ride the whole way home. Right. So one of the things you can do is you know Fibonacci numbers start with one plus one, right? Equals two. Yep. Add the last two number. plus one equals three. Add the last number. Three plus two equals five. So the next Fibonacci number would then eight. be eight then 13, then 21, then 34, then 55, then 89, then 144. And 144 is the, is the 12th Fibonacci, uh, Fibonacci number in the series, right? So what I noticed was that if I continue that cycle, and of course 144 would have a digital root of nine, yep. one plus four plus four, right? And what I noticed is that the pattern of numbers repeats every 24 Fibonacci numbers. No shit. Yeah. So I thought, well, maybe there's something fundamental to 24. And I knew six was important. And I knew Tesla had said three, six, and nine are important numbers, right? That the secrets of the universe can be found in the numbers three, six, and nine. So I thought, well, let me put numbers in a spiral around 24 positional points. It's like a 24-hour clock. So I did. So I put them in 24, then went to 48, then 72. This is just like a spiral that's expanding out. Right, numbers getting bigger and bigger. So at the northern axis, you would have 24, then we go 48, then 72, then 96, then 120, right, and so on, and do it infinitely, and see where the prime numbers sit. And so what I found was that at one o'clock on the 24-hour clock, at five o'clock and seven o'clock, and at 11 o'clock and 13 o'clock, and 17 and 19 and 23 o'clock. All those positions are the only places that prime numbers, with the exception of the numbers two and three, ever show up. They don't show up anywhere else on the chart. And I was fascinated, not just by the prime numbers being on only those spokes, but, and there was a fellow that wrote a book about this called The God Code. Uh, His name was uh, Peter Plichta. I had not read the book before. I I saw it referenced in a book by Talal Guanam, who was just on this conference call with us. And, uh, and I'd read his book, which is like, you know, thick, and it's on number theory, and I used to, you know, read it on an airplane type of thing, and people would look at me like, what the heck are you reading? And after I read the book, I, I, I sought him out and called him up, and I said, hey, uh, Professor Guanam, it's such a pleasure to meet you. And I said, I said, I loved your book, but I found five mistakes. <laughs> 
<laughs> and he said, what are the mistakes? I'm sure he's never, of course, he probably heard that before. And I told him the mistakes. And he's like, I'm going to fly out and meet with you. So within a week, uh, we had a deal that he would leave Saudi Arabia and in the university environment and come and work with me. And so he moved to Canada, right? And so he couldn't move to the United States because it's difficult from an immigration perspective. Sure. But, but what I found was on this 24-hour clock, what I really wanted to understand was where is the language that connects all math constants? It just so happens I found the prime number pattern. So I was looking for pi and phi, the golden number. I was looking for alpha and for Euler. Processional numbers and shit. Omega and all these kinds of numbers and, and how these numbers as verbs work together, right? Because in a verb, I, I could take a noun like text, the word text, and I could put an ing on the end of it, texting. It's an unfinished action, yep. right? Or I could turn it into a gerund. I could say to text, right? You remember grammatical classes when you were in junior high. Sure. So I thought irrationality would imply an unfinished action. That makes sense. So circle could turn into a verb by saying circling, mm -hmm. right? Just like texting. Yep. Takes a noun and turns into a verb. So I thought, well, the irrationality is this infinite number series that kids memorize in high school, right? And so many people are so focused on, particularly reductionistic, sort of like left brain, pure mathematician type thinkers. And so I was on the hunt to find the pattern of the verbs because that's how I learned languages. I'd always learn verbs first because I could always throw in the nouns. Right. And as long as I knew how to conjugate them in the verbs or wave conjugations in the case of numbers, then I could communicate. I could throw in a word like in Japan, the word for computer is computa, right? <laughs> not exactly that difficult you could throw in because most <laughs> cultures languages they study english and they know the nouns like crazy but they're horrible at the verbs so i always focus on the learning the verbs and learning how to conjugate the verbs correctly and then i can always throw in english nouns and pronounce it in their local you know sort of accent and and it would work i'm telling you it would work and and this is why he speaks eight languages. That's why I speak exactly. Computer. That's, that's right. computer in French, <laughs> and then computer. Well, that's actually, France doesn't even use the word computer. Although they understand it, they say ordinateur. 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 Exactly. So so basically, I was looking for this in the twenty four hour clock, and I plotted the prime numbers just as a reference point. So then I started thinking. I wonder if the numbers that are between the primes, between 5 o'clock and 7 o'clock and 11 o'clock and 13 o'clock and 17 and 19, what are those numbers? And then I found that every one of those numbers were math constants. Really? As related to 360 degrees and as related to 432. So you just reverse engineered that and found the pattern there. Yep, and found many, many, And then many eliminate where the prime numbers aren't. Right, and then I looked at all the numbers that weren't prime and I said, what about these numbers has a common characteristic as the prime numbers. And prime numbers are defined as numbers that are di divisible only by one in themselves, right? Mm -hmm. right? So the number seven is a prime number. You can't break it into smaller bits of whole numbers. You can only multiply one times seven. Yeah. That's it. And what I found was that the numbers that were not prime, but in the same spokes at five and seven o'clock, 11 and 13, 17, 19, 23, and then one o'clock, were actually divisible only by prime numbers greater than the number five. And so when I realized that all numbers in those same spokes would only be either prime or this other number that's divisible only by primes, then I thought, wow, I can derive an exclusion equation. If I can figure out how to generate these numbers that are not prime but have prime characteristic associated with them, then every number that I can't generate must be prime. Yep. And we ran it on a laptop computer, and within a few seconds, we had the first trillion integers analyzed, and every single prime number predicted was correct. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what you do with your free time when you got ADD to the max. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. So it was, uh, and, and interestingly, I discovered this within a few weeks after the, my last night in the Great Pyramid. 